A number of different health conditions, including prolonged immobility, can cause fluid buildup in the feet and legs. This can sometimes result in chronic wounds that can be slow to heal. Mr. Wilson, how are you feeling today? Well, I'm feeling a little better now that those wraps, what are they called? These are compression wraps. Yes, compression wraps. It seems like they're doing the job. Yes, I think he's feeling a bit better since he's been home and I know he loves having his foot up. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping your leg up and keeping the compression wraps on will really help the edema and the swelling that happened in your legs before you came to the hospital. So I'm just going to show you a different way to apply the wraps. I appreciate that. The nurse in the hospital put this one on and it did look complicated, so thank you for showing us. This video will help you with the steps of general wound care, how to identify signs of infection, and tips on how to keep this type of wound from happening again. It's important to have a few key items at home to ensure a safe, clean environment. For this type of wound, you'll need access to a shower or use saline spray, a towel to protect the bedding, four by four gauze pads, gloves, compression stockings or wraps, and baggies that zip shut. Before I remove the dressing, you wanna wash your hands really well. Follow the same sequence each time you change the wound dressing. First, wash your hands thoroughly and put on a fresh pair of gloves. Remove the old dressing carefully, placing it in a plastic bag for disposal. Cleanse the wound and pat dry. Remove gloves and place in zip bag for disposal. Wash your hands again before applying a clean dressing. You may want to wear gloves if there is discharge from the wound. Wash hands once more when finished. To take the compression bandage off, start by removing the tape that is securing the bandage. Then unwrap the limb and dispose of the old wrap. You can now see the bandage underneath that covers the wound. Be careful when you pull the bandage away from the wound. Once you've removed it, put the old dressing and gloves into a zipped plastic bag. Do not just toss them into the garbage. So once you have gently removed the dressing, you want to make sure that you check for any signs of infection. Okay, what would those be? Signs of infection include redness, swelling, change in wound discharge, fever, chills, or increased pain. If any of these are present, contact your healthcare professional. So when you take off the dressing, he can go ahead and take a shower, wash it with soap and water. I'm going to use some saline spray today okay. to show you how to do it, okay? okay. And then blot it. Okay, and then I, I have a plastic bag over here. You'll put all of his supplies in here. You can go ahead and remove your gloves as well and put them in the bag. Then you'll have a dressing here and you just apply the dressing. This is a silicone dressing. Okay. And as you apply it, you can stretch it over the wound okay. and then even it out. And um, I like to use the silicone dressings. They're available at your regular grocery store or even at um, any pharmacy. And they don't stick to your wound. So when you remove it, it shouldn't tear the skin. It shouldn't tear any of the wound either. So it should be painless. And um, next I'm gonna show you how to apply this um, compression. And I know it's different from what he had in the hospital. It is. And the one she put on in the hospital really looked complicated. Yeah, this part goes on first. Okay. And it doesn't apply a lot of compression. This part goes on really mostly to protect the rest of his okay. leg. Okay. And so you want to just put this on, slip it over like you would a sock, and pull it up to his leg. And make sure you get all the wrinkles out of it. Okay? Then there's this other compression part of it here and you put the black side towards his, his skin okay. and line it up with his leg and you just cross them over. You want it to be t firm enough, tight enough, that it gives him a little bit of compression. Okay. I'm gonna make sure there's not a gap in between. Okay. Okay, and this side, the very same thing. Okay, and attach the Velcro. Once that's done, you can roll these down for comfort again and roll this one and then put the, the sock on. It's a lot of compression, so you're gonna feel it kind of tight on your feet here. Oh, it is tight. It is tight. And then you just pull that up over this part. So what should I do make if sure this getting... gets dirty? Well, it's nice to have a second uh, one available, so you okay. can wash one and have the other one ready okay. for putting on. Usually it only needs to be changed about once every five days or so, okay. unless it gets soiled. 
Okay. Is there anything else I can do to keep this from happening in the future? You know, the main thing is, is that he needs to keep his leg elevated. Pump toes up and down to increase blood flow. How's that feel? Pretty good. It is important to eat a diet rich in protein, like lean chicken or turkey, vegetables, and whole grains to speed the recovery process. Monitor blood sugar if the care recipient has diabetes. Any questions for me? No, you have no questions on it? Mm, I'm sure I will have some, but for now, I'm okay. I think I have a better handle on things. Thank you. Okay. Be sure to consult with your healthcare professional if you have any questions or concerns.